Hello, this is Dr. Grant Cooper from Princeton Spine and Joint Center. In this video, I'd like to talk to you about what arthritis is. You hear the term arthritis all the time. So what is it exactly? Because the reality is there are different types of arth arthritis. Now, first of all, arthritis is a generic term that refers to inflammation of a joint. Itis is the Latin suffix for inflammation and arthro is a joint, so arthritis is inflammation of the joint. Okay, so it's a very nonspecific term, and as such, a lot falls under its header, which can lead to a fair amount of confusion. I think it's helpful to think of arthritis in two basic categories. The first is wear and tear, and the second is autoimmune. Wear and tear arthritis is called osteoarthritis, or degenerative joint disease, and this is the type that most of us think of when we hear the word arthritis. It's by far the most common type of arthritis. In fact, if you're lucky enough to live longer than, say, six decades, you're basically guaranteed to have a fair amount of osteoarthritis in your body. Now, this may or may not give you symptoms, and we'll go back to that in a moment. Osteoarthritis tends to affect the weight-bearing joints the most. This is the arthritis that leads sometimes to hip and knee joint replacements in older folks. Now, what's actually going on in osteoarthritis is a loss of cartilage in the joint. And then as a result of that lack of cartilage, there's a cascade of things that happens uh, within the joint to compensate for. And that's what osteoarthritis is at its essence. It's a loss of cartilage in the joint. Cartilage is a sponge that holds joint fluid in the joint. And then when you move your joint, it squeezes the sponge, which then releases the joint fluid into the joint. And this joint fluid then nourishes and lubricates the joint, in effect protecting it. At rest, the fluid then goes back into the sponge. So as you lose the cartilage, you lose your ability to hold on to that joint fluid, and so the fluid gets slowly reabsorbed into the body. Then the joint starts to make new bone, new cartilage, you get bone spurs, and other attempts to compensate for the lack of healthy cartilage. The bone itself sometimes develops cysts called subchondral cysts. Osteoarthritis accounts for about 60% of all arthritis. Importantly, if all that happens is you get osteoarthritis in your joint, you won't necessarily have any pain. The pain comes if the body responds to the arthritic changes with inflammation, which doesn't always happen. In fact, often it doesn't. This is also why it's so important to keep our muscles strong and limber because this is how we can help take the pressures of life off of our joints um, so that we can help keep them from ever becoming inflamed. Now, the second major type of arthritis is autoimmune. There are a lot of different types of autoimmune arthritis. Some of them are more common than others. Uh, common ones include rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and ankylosing spondylitis. Autoimmune arthritis share certain traits. First, as the name suggests, autoimmune arthritis is a process in which the body is attacking itself, and this then causes damage to the joints. Second, most autoimmune arthritis also attack other parts of the body besides just the joints. Also, while osteoarthritis tends to be noted in just one joint at a time, like the right knee, for example, autoimmune arthritis often present as multiple joint problems at the same time. It's very important to get an accurate diagnosis as soon as possible with autoimmune arthritis so that the condition can be brought under control and also potentially affected organs uh, that may also be involved, like the heart or the eyes, can be screened and monitored depending on the particular autoimmune arthritis. And naturally, the treatments between osteoarthritis and autoimmune arthritis are going to be very different. In autoimmune arthritis, the focus is going to be on getting the body to stop attacking itself. And for each autoimmune arthritis, the specific therapeutic approach will vary as well. We'll leave it there. I hope you found this primer on different arthritis uh, video useful. And if you've enjoyed it, and if you've learned something, please remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and please tell a friend who might also enjoy it as well, because that's the way that we can spread good health information and achieve good health outcomes together. As always, if you have any questions that you'd like me to answer in a future video, if you have any comments, you can reach me at drcooper at princetonsjc.com, or feel free to leave a question or a comment in the comment section. Thank you very much.